Anyone who says crime doesn't pay never worked for a newspaper. A.M. Every day like clockwork. 25 years in the same job would do that to you. People sometimes ask me if I wasn't a crime reporter, what would I do? I say, easy, I'd be a sports reporter. Hey, I am what I am. Think about it. Crime, sport. Good guys, bad guys. Black, white. That's been making headlines since Noah was in nappies. There's only one thing that fills up more column space than good versus evil. And that's evil versus evil. And if you look up evil in the dictionary, you'll find these two. In one corner, Joseph Theodore Leslie Taylor, AKA Squizzy, because he had a wonky eyelid. In the other corner, John Cutmore, AKA Snowy, because, well, every crim worth his salt needs a nickname, right? Melbourne, 1919. Squizzy's Richmond gang joins forces with Snowy's Fitzroy gang to snatch nearly 1,500 pounds worth of diamond rings from a Collins Street jeweller. But evil is as evil does. And before you know it, they're arguing over the split of the proceeds. And the Richmond boys are accused of grassing on the Fitzroy lads to the cops. Nineteen nineteen, Mianus Spectaculus. Snowy, Squizzy and the two gangs are at each other's throats. Stabbings, beatings, shootings. What they got up to could have filled the front page from here to Christmas. Call me selfish, but it was a sad day when Snowy bailed north. Mind you, Melbourne's gain was Sydney's loss. Snowy didn't muck around up north. Stand over work, pushing cocaine? Sure. Murder? Well, let's just say when a nasty piece of work called Norm Broom caught a few slugs and departed this world, Snowy Cutmore wasn't a million miles away. <laughs> Call me a cynic, but not long after, Snowy makes like a homing pigeon and heads back to Melbourne. If Snowy was a pigeon, Squeezy was an elephant. He never forgot. So when they both turn up at the nags on the same day, all bets are off. Old wounds are ripped open and it's on for young and younger. A few days later, when whatever I'd backed in the last was still running, Squeezy and two unnamed thugs track Snowy down. He was in bed at his mum's house in Carlton with a nasty case of flu. Somehow that turned into a fatal dose of lead poisoning, courtesy of five bullets. And Squizzy? Well, he went on to live a rich, full and happy life for about an hour. After Snowy's untimely death, Squizzy flagged a cab and headed for St Vincent's Hospital, with good reason. It seems Snowy Cutmore's lead poisoning was contagious. When Squizzy checked out of the hospital, it was in a wooden box. Strictly off the record, the cops couldn't have been happier. For years, they'd been trying and failing to nail Squizzy Taylor. Now he was gone, and Snowy Cutmore too. Win-win, right? Wrong. The cops had too many questions, not enough answers. Who were the two men with Squizzy? Was one of them the man who put him in a cab and then disappeared halfway to the hospital? And why did police find a gun stashed in the toilet system out the back of the Carlton house and another lying in a nearby laneway? 
Was there another gunman involved? Did Snowy's mum shoot Squizzy? Was it an underworld power play? Did a prominent businessman take out a contract? Was one of the unnamed men the shooter? Everyone had an opinion. You know what they say about opinions. So you want to know what I think? I think it made for a great story. And in my game, that's all that matters.